We went ahead and sanded all the seams where the styles and rails meet at those joints. And I'm really happy with the way those came out. It's like face frame quality. So we got all that sanded down and we just knocked that down with some 220 on the orbital sander. Then we popped our baseboard back in. The crown, we went ahead and got that in. So that's where we're at right now. So we're gonna go outside. I'll show you guys the panel molding that I chose for this. And this is where some people are just gonna freak out. Cause I was watching Gary Katz like years ago showing how to install crown molding and he was installing it, showing all the techniques that he uses, really good information. And the way he installed the crown, he just got crucified in the comment section for supposedly installing this crown upside down. Now, if you ask me, I don't care at all how people install moldings. I know there's a specific way in the book that they're supposed to be installed. Like in the catalog, it shows them like the, the profile of the crown. It's, this is supposed to be down. And there's a way that the architect is, I get all that. The architect designed it. But personally, I just like things that look cool. So we're gonna use a molding here that was not intended to be a panel molding. So don't freak out on me. I have no college background. I have no architectural background. I'm just a man with two hands who likes to make things look cool. That's it. So don't freak out on me. And the irony of it, all those people in Gary Katz's video who were saying the crown was upside down, it wasn't. It was actually a Windsor One crown and it was installed the right way. So it just goes to show how there's a lot of Monday morning quarterbacks who don't know what they're talking about. But I'm telling you what I'm doing right now, this molding was not intended for this. So let's go out, I'll show you the molding and we'll get started. So this is the molding that we're gonna be using as our panel molding. This is called a picture molding. This is meant to be installed on the wall and it's actually a very old school molding. The purpose of it is this beaded edge right here on the top it has a little slot in the back where these hooks would hook on and then you can hang pictures from it i know it sounds weird and i'd venture to guess that this thing probably doesn't get a whole lot of use for what it was really made for i've only installed this one time in 10 years and it was not for the purpose of what it's made for if that says anything. But what we're gonna be using this for is an offset panel molding. I have a real offset panel molding right here, a small sample of another profile. And you can see it has this notch cut out of the back of it. Very similar to the slot I just showed you on the picture molding. And the purpose of that is it'll sit installed in this cradled position. Just like a crown molding, you can see there's, there's space back there behind the two materials. And this, this offset panel molding will actually adjust to a really large uh, buildup. So you could even do it this tall if you needed to, if you wanted to go for a lot of depth. So that's the idea that we're doing with this picture molding. So now take a look at it with the picture molding. You can see my idea. So I'm just gonna cut it in this position and it'll be installed on our styles and rails that are already on the wall in there. And it's very important that when I cut this, it's cut in the exact position that it's gonna go on the wall. Because if it's not, it's not gonna fit properly. It would be the same as if you tried to cut crown on the saw in the wrong position and then you went to the wall and ceiling and went to go fit it in its place, it just wouldn't work out. So that's the same idea, but for panel molding. A 45 this way. And then I'll cut a 45 this way, making sure I'm up against it in that same cradled position. Yeah. 
Then I'll just chop this thing down the middle and obviously I don't need to have it cradled for that. So now with these two 45 degree miters, when I bring them together, they'll only close up tight when they're in that three quarter offset position. So you can see that. And I'll, I'll explain this better by laying it on the table of the saw. I mean, it's flat down and there's a huge gap there. But when I elevate it three quarters, I can close that up. And now we have an offset panel molding. There are three quarter blocks. And now that they're in position, you can see it's gonna sit right there. I don't even have to hold it. So that's what we're using this for. And someone's probably gonna say, why didn't you just use an offset panel molding? Because I really like this design. It's just a huge bead right here, just a flat spot and then a little um, cove down there at the bottom, a little OG shape at the bottom versus using something like this. This is just too much going on for me. And the cuts on this molding really aren't that clean. They're all curved and I'm not really a fan of this, but this right here looks super clean. So that's why I'm using it. And more than likely, we're probably gonna assemble these just like this. I'm gonna give it a shot and make sure that it's gonna stick good. Oh yeah, it's definitely gonna stick good. I got the, the glue on my tongue, mijo. Ow! That's how we're gonna look right there. Nice profile and a really nice built up piece. This is a chunky piece of molding for this. A lot of times when we do these kind of walls, we just put like a PM inside there or a cove but this is gonna really beef it up. Does it really go with the rest of the trim in my house? Not really, but like I've said many times, this house is just a lab for me to try new things and see if I like it. If I don't, then, then I'll remember that because I'll have to live with it. <laughs> so now that we have our little sample glued together, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this into one of these corners and then mark it. This is gonna make it so much easier for us to measure and make sure we're getting the right cuts on these panel moldings. And if you've ever cut like any kind of panel molding, you know it can be frustrating trying to see where to cut it at and looking behind your blade to see where that blade's gonna hit. This allows you to measure from tip to tip of the molding and then just cut from those and measure from those as well. If you ever cut outside corner molding, that stuff is probably the worst for what I'm explaining here. You understand that it's a little tricky. So anyways, we'll just drop this into place and you can see that looks really crisp. The thing that brought me to this molding was this huge bead. It's gonna be really cool to see this huge bead just running all around these panels. So now that I have it in a corner, I'll just mark here and then mark here. And then that will be how much we need to add. So we'll add an eighth and let me just make sure yeah, we have an eighth here as well. So we'll figure out, well, we actually already know the inside dimensions of all these and the inside dimensions of the verticals. So all we have to do is add a quarter, which would be an eighth on each side. All right, this right here is gonna be in honor of Carpenter 1-3. So this is my patented ghetto jig. This will be glued here. This will be glued here. I can still move the saw freely to get to my miters. And then we'll just pop it off when we're done. So this is really, really ghetto. Thank you, Frank at Carpenter13 for always inspiring me in the ghetto-ness. So that one should be good. I just, I just need them not to move while I'm cutting these. And it's very important that these two blocks are the exact same thickness or you'd be having some weird miters which I already checked that they were so right here we got an inch and three eighths and it doesn't really matter what they are in an inch and three eighths they could both be an inch and a quarter they could both be an inch and a half they could both be 10 inches if your saw could do that but the point is they need to be the same so now that those are there I can freely move this and I can cradle my panel moldings and you can see all of these right here and we are good to go. Now for the dimensions, this is my sketch from the last couple of days. I know all of these measurements and I double checked them to make sure they're good. 
all these right here, the 30 inches across, the 46 in, across, all that stuff is good. So I'm just gonna add a quarter to those and then a quarter to these as well for that eighth on each side. So we're in our cradled position. Make this first cut. All right, I'm gonna mark this first one, then we'll set a stop block for the rest. And from here on out, it's just a bunch of chopping. Yeah, we're at 25 and a half, which is exactly what I was going for. And then I'm gonna take this in, make sure it fits, and then I'll set up my stop block. Don't learn that the hard way. All right, so right there, it looks like we have a perfect fit with maybe a 16th of play which I'm gonna go with. I'm actually going to draw, this is a tip for you, draw a reference line right here on this yellow because this thing could be cut in different, um, you know, positions. So I just mark right there so I make sure I'm always in the right position. And I'll do it here too, just as another reference. So you can see those marks right there. If I'm on those, I'm good. And for this one, I'm gonna have to do the same thing. And then And then I'll just double check and right there we are good. You could see that miter coming together. So as long as I reference those pencil marks there, I shouldn't have any issues with this. This can go really wrong if you forget to do something or if you don't have it in the right position, you'll have huge gaps like that. And they'd be pretty much like on the same, like making it worse. Like they'd both be at the bottom like that or they'd both be at the top. You've got to cut these things dead on to get this.
This is going great. It looks awesome, guys. I'm really happy with the way this is coming out. I was a little worried. I didn't know if for sure that molding would work, but I took a chance on it, and it turns out this is a new offset panel molding that I'm going to be offering. So pretty cool. John is finishing up the last little bit of the assembly. And what we assemble this with is the CA glue. We actually sell this on our website. I'll put a link in the description. Go ahead and check that out. If you buy one, Ashley will ship it out to you. It usually arrives in a week. So if you want to check it out, that's what we use. And this stuff right here is a dream come true when you're doing this kind of work. So John has been assembling them. You guys have seen me been installing these things and that's the system that we're doing. So that's it. And I thought I would mention this because there's a lot of new people here and most of you guys who are longtime subscribers, you know, I mean, I use this on everything, brush my teeth with it, everything. So yeah, no, don't try that. Well, I am really happy with the way this has come out so far. Just wait till you see it painted. That'll be the next video. We're not gonna do a video on filling the nail holes and prepping, we've done that in the past. But I will show you guys how I prime and paint this. And that's gonna be the next thing. This has an awesome appearance. I'm so happy I went with that picture molding instead of a typical offset panel molding and used it as one because it makes a huge statement. The way the beads all intersect at those corners, especially in the mid rail. It's pretty cool. So in the next video, we'll go over the priming, we'll go over the painting. Um, and then as far as the color, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with the color. It'll either be white like the rest of the trim or the other choice was lime green. 